Windows 10 is by far the most popular operating system for gaming on PC. Linux has been getting some love lately, but the selection of games available on it is still too scarce to satisfy most gamers' needs. And Macs rarely have a GPU with enough juice to run any serious AAA title. So that leaves us with just Windows. And it's probably what you've been gaming on anyways. But just because it's the most popular choice for gaming doesn't mean that it's not without faults. On the contrary, Windows is quite notorious for its occasional crashes, frequent and forced updates, and the fact that it slows down significantly over time. This is a gradual process, and you're most likely not noticing it as it's happening, just like you don't notice yourself getting taller. But just try to imagine how quickly your PC booted up and opened every program back when you first bought it. This slowdown is especially irritating if you're a gamer, and you start experiencing even longer load times. So this is why we've decided to make this video, to give you some tips on how to optimize Windows 10 for gaming and finally get rid of these issues once and for all. Well, you'll still need to repeat these steps from time to time, but you get the picture. One of the first things you'll notice is that it'll gradually take more and more time for your PC to boot up. In a mere matter of months, your computer could go from booting up in a matter of seconds to taking seemingly forever. And it seems like this is happening for no apparent reason. But there is a reason. And more importantly, there is something you can do about it. The things that slow down boot time the most are programs that are scheduled to run on startup. Some of these don't even ask for permission to do so when installed, so you might be surprised to see how many programs there are clogging up this process. Still, it's rather easy to disable all of these. All you have to do is open the task manager by clicking Control, Shift, and Escape at the same time, and go into the startup tab. If the window opens in the compact mode, just click on more details. Here you can see the list of all the programs that are scheduled to run on startup, as well as how big of an impact they'll have on this. All you have to do to disable these programs is select them and click the disable button in the lower right corner. And it goes without saying that for the fastest boot up, it's best to disable all non-essential programs, even the ones with low startup impact. Leave only the programs that you would otherwise just start as soon as you boot up regardless. The second thing to do is uninstall any unnecessary programs that are just taking up space. Like with the case of startup, you might find some programs in there that you didn't even know you had, like pre-installed bloatware or programs that got installed along with some other software. These are just as easy to get rid of, although the process can be quite tedious if you need to uninstall a lot of junk at once. To do this, just press down on the Windows key and R and type in Control Panel. Then click on the Programs category or directly on Programs and Features if it doesn't go to Category review on its own. This will show you a list of every program that's installed on your computer. And from here, it's pretty much smooth sailing. All you have to do is select a program, click uninstall, and repeat until you're done. It's best to get rid of everything that you don't use and won't need, but make sure not to delete any important programs by accident, like software related to your GPU drivers, for example. If you're not sure what some of these programs do, it's always best to check, and this will usually not take more than a single Google search, so don't be hasty. Not only only will your system slightly speed up after you finish doing this, but you'll also most likely free up quite a bit of space. What you should do next is clean up the registry. This can also slow down your computer, but it's not something most people know about or how to get rid of, unlike with the first two things. And part of the reason for this is that Windows doesn't have its own automatic registry cleaning utility. This means that you would either have to do it manually or rely on third-party software. Thankfully, there are plenty of free registry cleaners out there, and the one we recommend is CCleaner. CCleaner is by far the most popular of these programs, and while the full program does come with a bunch of cool extra features, the free version is more than enough for the purpose of this video. We've left a link to the official download page down in the description. After you install the program and run it, select the programs you want CCleaner to scan and clean up, and watch the junk disappear from your computer. All of the important areas will be automatically flagged from the start, so you don't need to worry about these too much. After that, just click Analyze and then Run Cleaner once the scan is finished. If it looks like the program is stuck, then don't worry. It can take a while for the scan to complete if you haven't cleaned up the registry in some time. Then just go back to the Registry tab and rinse and repeat. Next up, we have defragmenting. And it's quite a shame that this isn't as widespread a method as, say, something like uninstalling junk software, or even reinstalling Windows, because it goes a long way to help your hard drive's longevity and effectiveness. So what is defragmenting? Well, it all comes down to the way an HDD functions. 
the disk spins and the ARM writes and reads data. And because of the way this mechanism works, individual files get split into multiple pieces in the drive, usually when there's a lot of reading or writing happening. This is called fragmentation. So as the name implies, defragmentation is what you do to fix this. And it's not that hard to do. Just type in defrag in the Windows search bar and go into the program called defragment and optimize drives. Once you do, you'll see all the partitions your HDD has. Just select one or all of these partitions and click analyze. It may take a bit to complete, but when it does, you'll see the fragmentation percentage displayed in the current status column. All you have to do now is select the partitions you want defragmented and click optimize. Now we should mention that the defragmentation process can take quite a while to complete, especially if it's in the double digits territory. But don't let this worry you. The performance impact you'll get while it's in the middle of defragmenting is minimal, and you can even always stop the process and continue later. Of course, if you have a solid state storage, like SSDs, memory cards, or flash drives, you don't need to worry about defragmentation. Of course, we can't go through this video without mentioning malware. The internet is not a safe place. And all sorts of unwanted software are lurking in every corner and dark alleyways just waiting to sneak into your computer and nestle there. These can be viruses, adware, spyware, Trojan horses and more, but they're collectively known simply as malware. And because the internet is so unsafe, there are many anti-malware programs out there that want to help make these scary problems go away. Most people know them as antivirus programs, but they can do so much more than that. They can scan your system and eliminate threats and block online threats from affecting your PC, just to name a few things. And while these programs sometimes differ very greatly in terms of what they offer, the most important distinction usually comes down to their price or lack thereof. Now, there are many advantages to getting a paid version of some of these programs, enough to warrant a video of its own, but we all like free stuff. The free program we'd recommend for cleaning out unwanted software is Malwarebytes Anti-Malware, as it's proven itself very effective at what it does. Other alternatives are Avast, Avira, Nod32, Bitdefender, and AVG. None of these will ever be able to provide you with the superb real-time protection that paid programs like Norton, Kaspersky, and McAfee do, but they're definitely a good start and can go a long way in helping keep your PC safe. But here's a conspiracy theory for you, just for fun. Are antivirus developers making internet viruses to raise the demand for their products? Tell us what you think in the comments. And of course, there's always the radical solution for speeding up your PC. There's nothing quite like reinstalling your Windows when things get too tough. And we know this might seem like a daunting task that takes an expert to do, but it's actually quite simple, and we'll walk you through the process in this video. Of course, the first thing you want to do is back up all the important files you have. You can move them to an external storage or upload them to cloud storage. But if you don't want to bother with these options, you can always just move them to the Dpartition. Now here come the actual instructions. First, insert your Windows 10 installation disk or USB where it fits and restart the computer. Sometimes the Windows installation will load automatically, but if it doesn't, all you have to do is start pressing the delete button on your keyboard as it starts booting up. This will open up your motherboard's BIOS. Select the boot tab to see a list of boot devices and set your optical drive or USB as the primary boot device. Then exit the BIOS and save the changes when asked. Believe it or not, this was the most difficult part. From here on out, the installation process is quite streamlined. Just select your current system partition, it's usually named C, and then select Format. You'll be given the option to change the amount of space on that partition or keep it the same. But either way, all your data on that partition will be erased. So we hope you backed up your data at the beginning like we told you to. After that, just let Windows do its thing, restart your computer when asked, and enjoy. Now, if you've tried everything on this list and have even gone so far as to reinstall Windows and your PC still moves at a snail's pace, then it's actually your hardware that's the problem. The silver lining here is that troubleshooting to see which piece of hardware is at fault is at least simple. Most of the time, hardware will either work or it won't. But some pieces of hardware, like HDD, can suffer great performance dip long before they're out of commission. So how to pinpoint what's at fault? We'll go through all the options, from most likely to least likely. 
HDDs are the most likely thing on your computer to start giving out, but more often than not, this is a gradual process that can take years. So if the performance issues were sudden, then you're likely going to need to look elsewhere. The motherboard is the most likely culprit if the problem is not with the system drive itself. Usually, the problem occurs when the drive has trouble communicating with the CPU. The problem here can be a defective port, a defective socket, or anything in between. It's quite uncommon to see CPU lead to performance dips, but it's not unheard of. This usually happens with older CPUs or those with poor cooling. RAM memory very rarely malfunctions. It either works or it doesn't, but it can still lead to performance dips if you don't have enough RAM. If you're running the 64-bit version of Windows 10 and still only have 4GB of RAM, then you should definitely consider upgrading to 8GB at least. It's highly unlikely that the power supply is the source of your problems, because if it's applying less power than needed, you're much more likely to experience random shutdowns and problems booting up the computer than performance dips. And finally, there's the GPU. Believe it or not, this is the least likely piece of hardware to cause problems without you knowing. You'll know it when your GPU stops working properly, because it's not shy to express this by showing you visual glitches or making your frame rate all extremely choppy. Still, there are some precautions you can take to make sure your Windows 10 is working as fast as possible even if your hardware is just fine. The first thing is to get an SSD and then upgrading your RAM to at least 8GB if you're using the 64-bit version of Windows. And finally, you might want to consider upgrading any outdated hardware, which is below the recommended specifications for running Windows 10. And there you have it! These are all the things that you can do to optimize your Windows 10 for the best possible performance. We made sure to make the list as thorough and the instructions as clear as we could, so that even those less tech-savvy of you out there can enjoy your Windows 10 in all its glory. You can always check out the article on the webpage on this exact same topic if you prefer reading the instructions. We'll leave the link down in the description. Just make sure to let us know in the comments if any of these tips worked for you. We'd love to hear that. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.